have not done one of these in a while, but I am headed to school and I'm gonna take you along um, a day in my life. And I am teaching today, so I'm gonna show you some things in the classroom and um, I don't know, just everything. It's been requested and I haven't really gotten to filming. I haven't really jumped on here that much to do a day in the life. To be honest with you, a lot of, um, you know, this, this type of video doesn't get a lot of views, but I love doing them. I love looking back on them. I really encourage you, I'm sorry, I'm looking around here. Um, you're on the tripod, but I really encourage you to check these videos out. It kind of gives you a glimpse into myself a little bit more, allows you to get to know me a little bit more. Um, but yeah, we're gonna jump right in. Welcome to A Day in the Life. Some of my students are working on clay this week and others are finishing up our shibori dye, but each grade level gets to do clay. Um, we fundraise for it every year. Well, I mean, I do, <laughs> um, but we have some turtles there. That is for kindergarten. If you flip them over, they can be little trinket pots. Uh, they love that. Then we had some owls that is done by first grade. We're making little necklaces. And then um, second grade are making pinch pots with lids with a design. Here are a few extra ones um, just in case any explode in the kiln. Um, that always happens. Fifth grade kind of gets their choice on what they get to make. It's a rite of passage. Uh, we had some very creative ones in there. Here are some that are out of the kiln um, and they are ready to glaze. So the kids are definitely excited for that. Um, there are about 1100 pieces of clay that we work with. Here are my kilns. Um, I am not formally trained with clay. I've just learned along the way. Um, it is time for coffee. This is the kind that I drink when I'm at school. I, um, I use the Keurig here at school, super fancy, I know. Um, but yeah, I'm not formally trained with clay. I've learned along the way. I've taught a few ceramic camps. I know how to throw on a wheel, but it is not my strong point, I would say. Um, some of the other kids are working on printmaking. We were um, sent by accident some plastic plates instead of styrofoam, so we are making the best out of it, um, carving into it with Q-tips, our fingertips, anything we can to pull a print, and they just look beautiful in the morning sunlight. I made a little clothesline here. That was really funny explaining what a clothesline was to some of the kids. Um, drop down in the comments if you still use one like we do. Next up are our Japanese shibori pieces. I would say in the style of just because we use multiple colors, but they came out so beautiful. We are going to learn how to sew them on a dowel and go from there. I'm super impressed with these. If you are curious about Japanese shibori, I have videos on there. Just search it in my videos and you will find all of my tutorials on how to make these beautiful items. So I popped out for lunch quick because of course I forgot mine. Um, I went to Kava. I have a gift certificate. It's, um, I guess it would be described like Mediterranean food, but um, they have a lot of vegan options. So I got a greens and grain bowl. So there's arugula in there, brown rice on the bottom. Then I got three dips. You can choose three. I got red pepper hummus, eggplant, and regular hummus. And then I got roasted vegetables and falafel. And then on top, I got black lentils, olives, Persian cucumbers, roasted corn, and pickled onions. So I'm really excited about this. Um, I've been hearing about kava for so long, and a parent, sweet, sweet parent, got me a gift certificate. Big shout to you. I know you watch the channel. Um, so yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. And I do have an adaptogen kombucha from Rowdy Mermaid, my favorite one, the blackberry ashwagandha in the classroom right now and then we are going to get right back into clay and dyeing um if i did not mention before let me turn you around all right so i don't think i mentioned before but we i do all of these things before spring break that way like 
spring break always seems deserved, but I want to, I don't know, just relax and not think about all of the things. So glazing the clay with the kids is a whole nother story. It's much more calm, um, controlled, not as messy, and I can kind of get things in the kiln and out of the kiln. I do it about two months before the end of the school year just to give us enough time just in case any students missed anything, but that is the goal with clay. Um, I'm really excited. I didn't mention the beginning of the day. Tonight we are starting our seeds. Um, we, I'm going to do it differently and I know I'm going to get so many different opinions. This is how I'm doing it. So you can drop your opinion, but this is how I'm doing it. Like I said before, I wing things a lot um, and see if they work. I don't do things methodically. I do keep a garden journal. I do that and I take notes from it from time to time, but I never do the same thing every year. It's just not something that I like to do. I like to do it all different kinds of ways. So we are actually going to winter sow in March, which means you just take some sort of vessel and put it outside and kind of let nature take its course. The water um, comes from the snow or the rain. Colorado doesn't get a lot of rain, so I might do some water in there. You have to moisten the soil. There's there's many aspects to it. I will kind of talk you through it. Um, the only uh, ringer in this, the game changer tonight, is snow is coming um, tonight like a bad snowstorm. So I might just start them inside and then in a day or two, put them outside um, when it has stopped snowing. Um, I'm gonna try everything that I have from my seeds. I have heirloom seeds from Azure um, Standard from uh, probably last year. And yeah, I'm really excited. So I'm gonna eat this and get inside, do the clay, and then I will pick up the kids, take you home and show you how we are winter sewing everything. Got the rascals. How was your day? How was your day? You eat my cracker. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we go. Oh. What? One to six. Put it on All right, we are situated for the commute. The snow is coming, so we are kind of racing uh, the snow home. We really want to get these seeds started. The kids love to help, so I'm just going to grab some dinner, get them fed, and we are going to head out to the garage here. As you can see, we still have our uh, Christmas decor up outside. I will get to it. I'm a busy gal. Um, I got a comment the other day from a neighbor about it. Oh my goodness, I was so embarrassed. And I <laughs> just said, you know, I'll get to it. But um, yeah, we're going to start our seeds here. I've just been saving some milk jugs. I will show you how I use these in a second. But I am going out filling these with dirt. So um, I have some organic soil. I have some compost. And then I found on Instagram a new account. I am still new to him. So I will uh, drop that down eventually. But he said to take the melon skins that you use, cantaloupe, watermelon, I mean, really anything. Those are the two that we use the most of. And then you put them in the oven for two hours at 200 degrees, let them dry, and then grind them up and you sprinkle it in your soil. And it has so many vitamins for your plants. I encourage you to do that as well. Hey everyone, we are home. Um, if you hear a dog in the background, it's not ours, it's the neighbor, but I'm going to try and speak up here. We are home. Um, I have everything set up. You saw me kind of fill up the dirt and prepare the containers. Uh, I am going to get some seeds in here and then I kind of will do a rundown of how I do this. I did this last year with my greens and my broccoli and we uh, had a great season for both. So um, if you don't do it this way, that's fine. Uh, this is just a way that I do it. It's cheap, inexpensive, and um, 
I've done flowers and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It really depends. Um, my sunflowers do really well like this, but I don't know. I don't know much about flowers. I'm not saying I'm, I'm an expert on um, vegetables or anything, but I am certainly trying my best. So I'm going to flip you around here and show you how I do this. I hope um, the barking isn't um, distracting now that I'm thinking about it. So I may voice over the rest of this if it gets too distracting and I watch this footage and I'm like, oh my goodness. So let me flip you around, show you what I have working with. Okay, so tonight it's gonna snow. So I'm just putting this in my garage window and then when it stops snowing, I'm gonna put it out. Honestly, I think it will be fine. The idea is everything will germinate inside the vessels um, in four to six weeks. It really depends. So I have some old milk jugs here and then I punch some holes at the bottom. You could even, um, punch some holes around this area too, just to let in rainwater. But like I said, in Colorado, it doesn't rain that much. So that's my only issue with that. Um, and then I just poke my finger in. You don't want it too deep, but um, that's how you put your seeds in. And then you just kind of, you want moist soil in there. So I have some water right here. And then you just put this on top of it, duct tape it, and go from there. So when I go out, uh, when they go outside, I'll duct tape it. But for tonight, I'm just gonna leave them like this. And then for these vessels, I get these at the Dollar Tree, or sometimes I can find them at Goodwill. But underneath these, um, in order to fill this, I have my compost in here, and I have some organic soil. Yes, it's organic. Sorry if it offends anyone. Um, <laughs> I. Um, at the bottom here, ha there's like a cardboard piece. So I put it in there um, just to fill it up and then I take it out and use it as the lid. So as you can see, I'm having trouble. There we go. Okay. So um, I poked a few holes on the bottom there just for some drain drainage. I'm going to wet this and then I do uh, uh, maybe six to eight in here. Really depends on what I'm putting in here, but broccoli in here, kale in here, and um, what else is I gonna do? Oh, collards in here, um, just for tonight. And then we'll do some more here coming up. I might do some root vegetables, not cool rock in there. But, um, and then when I do that, I just put this thing on top of it. Like tonight, I'll just do it like that, but you can just put it like that because you need some sunlight for it as well, so. This is what I do. Give it a try. Let me know how it works for you in four to six weeks. <laughs> Okay, that is it. I hope that was semi-informative. I am a teacher, but I teach young children. So um, I try and try and teach you all how to do this kind of thing. We're gonna head inside. As you saw, it is starting to snow. We're gonna play in the basement and we're gonna make some Irish coal cannon. So come along with us. It is so easy and yummy and um, the leftovers are phenomenal with Irish Cold Cannon. So I'll show you how to make it. I'll drop the link in the description box. And yeah, hope you're liking today. It's a good time switching it up, getting on camera, talking to y'all. Oh, hey, All right. It's, hey, it's hey. Okay. Is it gonna snow? No, it's not snowing. It's not snowing yet. Do you want to go make potatoes? No, no, it's going. He could stay outside all day, just like Mama. Delilah, come on inside. All right, here we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
have coffee from the other day. I'm gonna put some ice in there. So we're actually having like big problems with our fridge. Our freezer works, but it seems as if the refrigerator um, is no longer working. So um, we are dealing with that struggle right now. Um, and in the market for a new refrigerator if we can't replace this fan. So we shall see how that goes. Let me know if you know of any that are super cheap. Um, but yeah, I uh, have my coffee here. It's a iced Americano with coconut milk and a shot of vanilla. I'm going to peel the potatoes here. The okay, kids are playing yeah, in the mom. basement. I'm gonna cut the cabbage, onions. That's basically Mommy. what you need for all of this. All right, so now that the potatoes are cooked, I'm just putting some vegan butter in there, a splash of oat milk. You can use whatever you want here. I mash all the potatoes up and then I just add the cabbage, onion, and butter mixture. I'm just sprinkling some parsley in there. You could do salt and pepper. I did sprinkle a little bit of garlic. I forgot to show that, but I just serve this with brown gravy. Um, it's really just something that we eat around uh, St. Patrick's Day, but it's up to you. It's um, said to bring good luck to your family. So we, we always eat our luck. If you're Irish, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> but here is my plate. We have some brown gravy here and I'm going to sit down with the kids, read them a book, get them ready for bed and um, yeah, just start our nighttime routine. I am really enjoying watching Elsa Ray and Baron at night, all of their old videos. Um, and I'm watching this uh, new one one more time. But I do have some shibori folding to do. Um, if you didn't know my apparel line, I started doing some more kids clothes. I used to do kids clothes a lot. Um, then I kind of took a step back, but I really want to get back into it. I have... Um, a vision. I have a vision and I'm really working at it. I haven't said in the past, but I have been creating my own apparel since um, before we left for Colorado. So it's been about 12 years in the making. My mom could tell you I've been doing it for a lot longer than that. Um, I've always had a dream to do this. So I, I'm not giving up this time. I'm very passionate about this new line. If you are new to it, um, it's always linked in my description box. Um, using my art on clothing has really been my dream forever. And I've always had the usual support, family and friends, but I've never had you all as um, a supportive community. I have been on YouTube for a while and it's taken a long time to grow. I, I've, I've said that in the past. Um, so I think that is why I, when I get negative comments, I take it to heart, but I don't acknowledge enough the amount of positivity there is on this channel and support and just the amazing community. I, I love this connection that um, we have all made. So I just wanted to pop on here and say thank you. Thank you. I mean, for everything. I The, the support in the last video with my Q&A, I got real raw and honest and people were so kind and non-judgmental. Most of you, I'd say 99% of you were, um, but I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this new venture is going to take me, YouTube apparel, and um, having the time to be a present mother. I haven't um, I guess I haven't had 
really the time to do that. Um, working a full-time job, it, it makes it incredibly difficult. I'm sure other mothers out there that are working 40 plus hours a week have this struggle as well. So I am just grateful for this community. I'm grateful that this platform has allowed me to connect with so many amazing people in the world. I, you know, I, I get comments from so many different countries and I'm so incredibly humbled by that. So big shout to you. I am going to get these shiboris into the dye bath. I've been dyeing with natural dyes and about a tablespoon of RIT just to, um, RIT dye, just to increase the longevity to the wearer. So I'm going to get these outside. I have all my dyes outside just to be careful and I'm going to end the vlog here. So thank you for being here. I know this was a little bit different of an approach to all the seed starting, but I just wanted to say I appreciate you all and stay adventurous, stay creative. I will see you next time. Bye everyone.